Yo, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another video. So today's video we're going to be talking about how to work with light mode and dark mode. And by the end of the video we're going to have made something like this. So right now we have a button at the top right corner that I can toggle. And it'll switch between light mode and dark mode. And I can click on anime list and we can see all of our anime in a clean gallery view. And I can click on this button and it'll navigate between light mode and dark mode. And it's also responsive with the size of the screen. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so the last time we left off, our app looked something like this. Really, really plain. Nothing to write home about. And today, we're going to first work on how to create the functionality and the button to go between light mode and dark mode. And then after that, we'll style our card to make it look a little bit better. So within my app function right here, I'm going to create a use state variable. So the const is dark mode and set is dark mode. And make this equal to a use state imported from react and we're going to initially set it to be true so initially when you open up the app it's going to be in dark mode now for that i'm going to create a function that is going to toggle in between or back and forth between light mode and dark mode so what i'll do is call it const toggle theme is equal to function call and then i'll do set is dark mode and give it a parameter call it previous mode and we're going to do not previous mode so this is going to allow us to be able to toggle toggle between light mode and dark mode all right so the next thing that we're going to be doing is we need to set our light mode and dark mode to the local theme of the app so that we can actually remember the state that the app was in so if it was closed we reopen it then it'll set it as either or whichever the user set so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a use effect variable use effect function and give it an empty array block and inside of there what i'm going to do is i'm going to call a variable i'm going to create a variable called stored dark mode is equal to local storage dot get item and what we'll just do is dark mode like so and then after that if store dark mode is not equal to null then we'll just do set is dark mode to be json dot parse and then stored dark mode there we go and then finally after that at the very bottom here this is gonna bug out don't worry about that uh, but at the very bottom here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called const theme is equal to create theme. I'm going to import, import it from material UI and I'm going to give it a parameter called palette. And this is going to be an object with a key of mode and the value is going to be called is dark mode. And so if it is true that it is in dark mode, then we will do dark else we're gonna do oops <laughs> light there we go all right so the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to contain my entire query client provider and the entire app within something called a theme provider from material ui now this this theme provider is what is going to contain our create theme variable right here so it can provide theme all across the entire app so i'm going to give it the parameter of theme and give it the variable called theme there we go and now it's going to say that it is oh it doesn't have a closing brace so let's go ahead and import that right there there we go and the next thing i'm going to do is i need to pass the variable toggle the function toggle theme and is dark mode into my navbar so then we can actually click a button in our navbar to toggle in between light mode and dark mode all across the app. So what I'll do is I'll give it two parameters. So I'll do toggle theme. And that is going to be equal to our function, which is equal to toggle theme. And after that, I'm going to give it another parameter called is dark mode and make that equal to is dark mode. There we go. All right. So before I forget, I do also want to create the light mode dark mode for the background as well so for our gradient right here so for the div what i'm going to do is i'm going to give it a class name 
and this class name is going to be a ternary operator so it's going to check for is dark mode and then if it is in dark mode then give it gradient dark and gradient light there we go and these are going to be our there's going to be some app css styles that we're going to create in a little bit and before i forget i'm going to go ahead and actually create those variables right now because i know for a fact i'm going to forget i'm going to come back at the end of the tutorial and have no idea what's going on so bit behind below my uh, body css i'm going to go ahead and copy this background right here and i'm going to create a class name called gradient light and i'm going to go ahead and paste the background right there now i did paste the background there which is perfect but i also need to give it some more styles just so it, it, it expands throughout the entire screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a height, which is going to be equal to 100 VH. And I'm also going to give it a width, which is going to be equal to 100 VW. And then I'm going to go and do display flex, and then do justify content to be center, and then align items to be center as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and create the next one, which is going to be our gradient dark. Now for our linear gradient, it is actually going to have a couple of different properties. So for our degrees, I'm going to go ahead and give it 112.1. And then for this color, I'm going to go ahead and use RGB 32, 38, 57, and... 11.4 I'm gonna go ahead and copy the next one so I can save some time there we go and I'm gonna apply the same styles perfect uh, this linear gradient isn't actually correct from the values that I've written down on my on my code base I think it is yeah it should be fine and so now when we go into dark mode it's going to actually switch between these two CSS styles and we can go ahead and actually get rid of this we don't we don't need that Okie dokie, so the next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my navbar file and I'm going to go ahead and import two icons, which is going to be fa sun and fa moon. So we can toggle between sun and moon and it looks cool. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and import the parameters. So this is going to be toggle theme and is dark mode. There we go. And then right inside of my anime list right here i'm going to go ahead and add a ternary operator that checks is dark mode question mark and then it's going to be a button from material ui whenever it's ready to give me the option there we go and basically on click of this button we are going to be toggling between toggle theme the function that we imported from right here uh where is it right here this one so we're just talking about that right here and then after that i'm going to give it fa sun with a self closing brace and i'm going to give it a style which is equal to color to be yellow and then else what we'll do is i'm going to go ahead and copy the exact same thing paste it right here and for this one, let's go ahead and actually apply the styles here. So what I'll do is I'll give it style is equal to color to be blue. And so now if I save it, we see this button, see if it works. And it works. We can see that it goes back and forth between the two. However, the thing that shouldn't be happening is that we should not be navigating to the anime list page right here. We should only be toggling um, light mode and dark mode. And I also realized one other thing is that I'll, I've imported the sun twice. Let's go ahead and add moon here. And let's get rid of this style right here. And the next thing is the reason we're navigating to our anime list whenever we click on this button is because I've actually put it inside of the nav link accidentally. So let's go ahead and put it right there. And I save it. And now I can toggle back and forth between the two. And we can see our gradients change and also our text change as well. So if I go back to my anime list, we can see that it looks a little bit better. Still pretty trash, but just a little bit better. Okie dokie. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to style our cards. 
So now our app looks so our app looks a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my anime list.tsx file and I'm gonna go ahead pretty much comment out this entire thing. Don't actually need any of it right now. We're gonna use that as a reference point. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a div tag. And inside of this div tag, I'm gonna give it a class name. And I'm gonna make this class name equal to anime list container. And then after that, I'm gonna give it an h1 tag. And then I'm gonna give it another div. You have no idea how much I hate ESLink right now. Uh, I'm gonna give this a class name. I don't know how to disable it either. So if you're asking me why I'm complaining, why don't I just fix it? I just don't know how to. If anybody knows how to do it, that'd be fantastic. Please tell me. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna give this a title of anime list page and then within the second div This is gonna be called a class name anime oops, Anime items Container all right, so within this div right here I'm gonna first fix this name to be anime items container like so and inside of the div What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some squiggly braces and I'm gonna give it the same data dot data dot map and then give it anime as a parameter and then I'm going to give it a card for material UI I'm going to call this card with a class name which is going to be equal to anime item and then after that I'm going to give it a key which is going to be equal to anime dot mal underscore ID and then after that, I'm going to do SX, which is going to be equal to max width, which is the equivalent for material UI styling. Max width at 345 pixels, but you don't write pixels. Cool. And then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a card media whenever it's ready. There we go. Looks like it didn't import properly. There we go. Okay. And this is going to be a self closing brace. So this is going to be equivalent to an image tag. So I'm going to give it the component parameter, which is going to be equal to IMG. And then after that, I'm going to do image, which is going to be equal to anime.images.jpg.image underscore URL and then finally alt which is alternative text which is going to be called anime dot title and so the next thing uh, I want to do is I want to convert these into curly braces like so because it's just not making any of this stuff appear there we go so now we should at least see the images for each anime nice perfect so now after that what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it card content which is going to be imported from material UI exactly and inside of there is going to contain a typography for material UI which is going to be called anime dot title and I'm going to give this a gutter bottom variant to be equal to h5 and then component to be well, let's see it at H5. I think H5 should be good. Perfect. And so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And then I'm going to paste it again. And let's go ahead and give it the variant. Get rid of gutter bottom. Let's give it a variant of body2. And color to be text.secondary. If you're wondering where I'm getting all this stuff from, it's straight from documentation. Uh, you don't really need to worry about what these parameters really do. This one basically just changes the variant of this topography to equal to a certain thing. This one makes it H5. This one makes it body 2. And for this one, I'm going to give it anime description. There we go. And then after all this is over, oops, after the card content, I'm going to give it a card actions, which is going to contain a button from material UI I think I didn't import it oh I did okay cool uh, and this is going to be equal to a size of small and I'll type in here expand 
anime or something like that so it'll go directly to that anime nice so this is looking a little bit better so i click on this nothing's gonna happen obviously but it is um dynamic with light mode and dark mode which is perfect all right cool so the next thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get rid of this commented out code since we don't need any of it anymore and i'm gonna open up my explorer and inside of pages i am going to create a new file and i'll call it anime list.css and i'm just going to go ahead and import all the css that i've created don't worry this is actually all in the description down below as paste bin or you can just go to the repo go to the exact file and just copy it from there i don't want to waste your time but i'll quickly just walk through what's happening so basically once i save it i also have to import it oopsie doopsie so i'll do import dot slash anime list.css and so the reason it doesn't look really good right now i mean the cards look fantastic and it's working with light mode dark mode but it's because i have a little bit of typo with, i added an extra eye and this just proves to you that css will really pull your hair out um but fortunately it is responsive and everything this is exactly what we wanted and if i were to let's say click on this it toggles back and forth between light mode and dark mode which is perfect now let me go ahead and quickly talk about what's happening with the css all right so the styling is pretty simple i actually removed a ton of it um it's just these four class names right here the first one is the animated list container which is the entire page right here all it has is a height of 100 of vh and that allows you to scroll up and down with the overflow auto and after that we have the page title which is just this text right here just that's the only that's it and after that we have the anime items container which is the entire container for all of our anime so this entire section all the way to down here and then after that we have the anime item the actual individual item itself and we just have a simple margin box shadow flex pretty simple nothing too complex but however it is completely dynamic which is exactly what we wanted and it can toggle between dark mode and light mode Ooh. All right, uh, I'm going to put it back to dark mode because it just looks a lot better. So that's pretty much about it. So that concludes this tutorial. The next one, we're actually going to be learning about how to actually dynamically route between our anime. So if I click on this one, it should open up its own page. And we'll see more information about that anime if you want to see about Naruto or whichever one. Uh, but that's pretty much all about it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.